On the 17th of March is the day that we call St. Patrick's Day, and we honor the Irish that have come to our country. And when we think of the people from Ireland, we think about, oh, the color green. See, I wear green, and we have all green all around on St. Patrick's Day. And also we think about potatoes when we talk about the Irish people. And so this is a story about Jamie O'Rourke and the big potato. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had anything to do with growing potatoes. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go up and di out and dig those patties. Oh, the plain saints preserve us, said Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig up those patties yourself. I'll break in two if I so much have, have to get out of this bed. So poor Eileen, who had done all of the planting and the watering and the seeding anyhow, would go out into the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and they had no money to buy good potatoes. See? Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. And with Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no praddies all winter, and no praddies meant no food. Oh, poor me, wailed Jamie. I'll starve to death. I best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's nothing telling how soon old death will be knocking at me door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Sure as I wouldn't be annoying, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of fairy boots that he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held him. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now, every woman in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was more clever than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes, and I have only one or two pieces of gold in my pot. Would you take a wish instead? What? Why, what would I wish for? Jamie asked. Me who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick in bed and I can't dig the praddies for the winter and there's such pruny patties anyway. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest praddy in the world. It would last all winter and you would have to do anything more than plant it and water it and then wait. Well, that sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun jumped this, dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails and off the leprechaun scattered. When Eileen heard what they had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, if you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well. Giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed? Well, I'm going to plant this seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said. And out he went. And by faith, Eileen did see. 
In no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, and it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. And he hoed all around it, but he could dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out, and he pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you know it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming up to see that big potato. Where did it come from, they asked. And Jamie told them about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why, anyone could have given a pot, gotten a pot of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world? Now that took some doing. However, did you outsmart that leprechaun? They all asked at once. And Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. Well, we'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you tell us how you did it. And they all grabbed shovels and hose, and they all started to dig. And they dug and they dug, and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole, and it rolled on down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom, where it bounced up high and came to a stop, wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. Huh, what to do now? That pratty is so big that no one, no cart, no nothing can get by it, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do? All the villagers wailed. Then they all looked at Jamie and said, It's your pratty, you'll have to move it out of the way. Well, Eileen spoke up. There's more than enough pratty for everybody. Why don't you all just take some? So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off the large pieces of the potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potatoes to eat and eat and eat and eat until no one ever wanted to hear about a potato again. And in the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed, and it's just about time to plant it. Oh, no, all the villagers cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Well, Jamie smiled. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with all that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. But take a look at this. You see that little leprechaun? <laughs>